Hi folks, welcome to Mike's City Point Terminal Model Railroad. Um, this week I'm doing something a little different. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do these uh, uh, videos. Um, this one I'm going to do a voiceover. I have a hard time trying to uh, describe what I'm doing when I'm focused on detail work. And this week is detailed work as I'm going to be laying track. Um, and I'll also be talking about some of the plans going forward for the railroad. Um, first of all, for I'm doing a hand laid track. I, you've seen the pre previous episode where I, I glued down the ties and now I'm going to nail down the uh, track on top of the ties. So one of the uh, aspects of this is um, the stub end switches I'm using, which aren't normally what you see on model railroads. Basically the uh, ends of the uh, switches meet up with the ends of the lead-in tracks and the lead-in track is meant is bent to uh, match up with uh, either route uh, either the diverging route or the straight route. And so what I'm right now I'm doing is I'm fixing the bridles to the end of the two pieces of tracks so it, this it's spaced correctly. Um, and actually it took me a little while to get this one in. Um, there was a burr on the end of the uh, rail and uh, when there's a burr on the rail you're basically trying to put it in a miniature uh, rail joiner that's been soldered on a PCB tie. Um, so it gets kind of hard if there's a burr anywhere. So anyway I spent a few minutes getting this uh, burr out of there and and this thing fed into there but eventually uh, as you'll see in the video later on um, I was able to accomplish it. So what I'm going to do is, is a little change of pace talk about some of the plans I have for the City Point Terminal Railroad which is uh, working in my basement. I have a garage under half the house so I have half a basement literally to to work on it. So um, as I've said or indicated uh, the railroads uh, model railroads modular it's meant to be in pieces so I can move it for whatever reason occurs so I don't have to totally destroy it if I want to take it anywhere so I'm working right now on the second module but as I'm doing this I'm also doing some minor tweaking remodeling of the basement and uh, dreaming up future plans for how I'm going to uh, fit this into the basement. The The overall plan for this will not fit in my basement, but the first three modules uh, will. So what I'm going to show you next is the plans I have. Uh, I drew these up this afternoon real quick and toward the top of the uh, uh, screen there you can see the three modules. Basically I got the lead-in tracks, which is a railroad cut leading to the uh, docks at City Point and the second module is the um, railroad yard with the locomotive house the car repair shops and the turntable and it has the most switches of any module there's 10 switches on this one so the uh, the tracks leading out lead to uh, among other things the uh, wood uh, rack for loading up uh, wood on the uh, tenders, um, the, the quartermaster wharves, locomotive wharves, and the magazine wharves. So those are kind of the three modules I'm doing right to scale based on a, a map was done shortly after the war. Um, and then what I've been thinking about, I know in the previous uh, video I mentioned I had the stairs going down. I think I'm going to build a wall there and close the stairs, put a pocket door under the uh, stairs where I keep uh, winter coats and boots and stuff and so when I'm thinking I'm having so much fun with this I'm kind of dreaming of what else I can do and if I get rid of a lot of stuff that's taking up a lot of room in the basement I can perhaps do a, a commissary um, and bakery uh, module in the corner there just by bending the tracks after they lead off here, bending them around, 
and then uh, leading behind the furnace and coming out over my uh, work table and doing a sh little shelf layout of s cedar level station. Uh, a couple months ago, there was an article come out in Battlefield Photographer, um, which is a Civil War uh, photography magazine where uh, somebody had um, highlighted uh, cedar level station and it looked... Uh, kind of neat it might be a neat thing to uh, model on a uh, little shelf layout so I was hoping I could have a continuous maybe loop something back around to the wars and have continuous running but the more I look at it after uh, drawing this up and you know this is semi to scale I haven't measured you know the size of the furnace and water heater utility closet but it's it's basically to scale. There's it'd be very hard to loop around track and still have room to move around in the in in this small basement. So what I would probably want to do if I want continuous running is just uh, basically uh, do some automation and have uh, locomotives have sensors put build in some sensors in the module and since I use DCC just send some DCC commands to send uh, locomotives forward and back from Cedar Level Station back to the uh, railroad wharf or what have you um, so that's what what I'm kind of dreaming of um, there was also a picture on the um, there's also a uh, photography Civil War uh, photography uh, group in Facebook, and they um, they put out a um, and they're associated with this Battlefield Photographer magazine, and they put out a happen to put out a picture, a well-known picture of some uh, a black guy uh, doing some cooking. And I finally and it was supposed to be taken at Cedar Point, and I never really realized where it was taken and it was taken right out in front of the bakery um, I figured that out so that's kind of why I got some interest in the bakery it might make a little uh, a neat little scene there in the corner there so that's pretty long ways off I've got a lot of stuff in the corner this corner of the basement I would have to uh, get rid of or move or something um, I, I don't have a lot of storage room. It seems like it's taken up by all the stuff I accumulate over the years. So, um, but it, it, I'm getting rid of, or I'm actually uh, embarked on uh, getting rid of some of the vintage computers I've uh, accumulated and I are, are less interested in. And they take up a lot of room. So I'll get rid of some of those. That'll help a little bit, but there's a lot more stuff that I'll need to get rid of. But anyway, I'm motivated, so I'm working on it. But that's kind of a long-range idea. These main three uh, modules that are highlighted would uh, probably take the quite a while, probably a couple more years, to get to the point where I, I'd feel good about them. And then the other thing I've got here is uh, I got a track going off to what would be the Magazine Wharf module. And that would go out into the middle of this room. I really can't fit it. It would just mess up human flow through that room. But maybe I can put a small little module out there representing the magazine wharf. Maybe there's enough room for that. Kind of cheat and uh, compress it and tweak it. So that's an idea I, I might do someday. But uh, for now, that track's leading nowhere. So anyway... Um, now I'm going to get back to uh, showing you what's going on with this hand laid track. Well, as you can see, I got the first bridle on. Um, there's four of them to put on for each of these tracks that lead into the switches. Um, so I've got uh, two of the four on, and it gets easier once you kind of get the... Uh, Oh, actually, I've got three of them on. And uh, the way I build these little uh, bridles is they're uh, made with uh, track uh, connectors. And, uh, and then I cut them off with a, a cutoff wheel and a Dremel-type rotary tool. 
and when it cuts it off it kind of smushes the ends and that's what I'm doing is I'm just picking them open again and clearing out the burrs that get into there and the last of the uh, four bridles has an extension so I could use that as it moves to activate um, simulate activating a uh, a switch stand and here I'm looking at which way I'd want it to lead out and uh, it's clear there's more room one way than the other I don't know how the original on that switch location was positioned but there's a hole going down through that last bridle down to under the table where I'll connect it to tortoise switch machines so I'm just cleaning some fuzz out of that hole before I uh, put everything there and one thing about that homosote it's kind of it's like paper so when you cut it it tends to just fuzz up and make a mess so it's not the cleanest cutting thing I've ever seen but let's see how this goes got it on now I've got to get them all lined in space basically when I put those wood ties down if you saw my previous video for the first four ties at, near a switch I space them pretty close so they keep the bridles aligned pretty well it's kind of the, the ties down there act as alignment it's almost how a real stub switch works. If you look at an old uh, Civil War picture, they'll have these bridles kind of almost the same way. So there I've got it in there, and I'm just making sure it moves smoothly between the ties. And these, this rail comes, this microengineering rail, rail comes in three-foot sections, so I'm just trying to sort it out. get it lined up make sure the uh, ends of the rails don't stick out too much past the end of the bridles or they'll hang up it's kind of a fidgety thing here and then what I'll do and I'll probably show a future video on this when I put the tortoise switch machines in there'll be a rod coming from under the table to that last bridle and it'll move the bridle left and right and I'll put screws in the homosote as stops so either way you move the uh, bridle can only go so far and when it stops it'll be aligned and there I'm putting the uh, rail craft uh, those are jigs that uh, space the track properly. I've got four of these. I really didn't need four of them, but they're so inexpensive and it's just handy to have all the track uh, lined up. So now comes the tedious part, um, which is putting the uh, nailing the uh, track down. I, I use a, that uh, bookmark as a straight edge to make sure the track leads in pr pretty s s straight as possible into the... Uh, and I also use it as a distant gauge. So, because it's basically got to bend the track. You can't nail it right up to the bridles. You've got to leave some space for it to bend. So I decided in this case I'm going to go back that far. So all the track from that nail, from that point back will be solid. And then this part will bend. And I'll take two of these uh, guides 
one on each side of the uh, where I'm nailing it in to keep the track um, spaced properly and then I'll take uh, a nail on my pliers and push it into the through the tie which sometimes is easy these uh, ties are different densities and sometimes the uh, little spikes go right in other times they just fight it and it, there's different um, also when it goes through the glue the glue is hard it doesn't like to go through the glue so it actually takes quite a bit of force to push these in and get them straight and then once in a while I'll bend one and I'll just toss it and get another one So you put them in at a little angle, and the ties are actually L-shaped, so they hook over the bottom of the rail. Really can't see it in this, but and then you can see how the rail bends and aligns with the uh, switch, the rest of the switch. Now on a switch leading out, I'm not going to do every, I'll do, I'll start with um, three ties back. I'll do nail it down again. And then normally when I'm away from the ties, I'll do every five. And that way closer to the switch as it bends, it doesn't warp the rest of the track as much because it's closer together. But I can imagine some some people who have more patience than I do might try to nail or <laughs> yeah put a spike in every uh, tie and it that's just beyond what I can do. I just don't have the patience. So as you see, I'll be working my way down here. Okay, uh, after doing a few of these, I'm going to take a little break, find myself a, uh, a railroad truck, line up the uh, line up the switch, and run the truck through the switch, see how it looks. And uh, you can see on the diverging route, it's uh, rolling pretty well. And I'll put it on the straight, and it's also rolling pretty well on the straight. So that's um, the crux of the issue. I think at this point. Uh, I'll end the video.